Welcome to the second session of the Knox County Health Department's three-part diabetes management series. This session is gonna be all about healthy eating and carb counting. In our last session, we learned a lot about the basics and background for type two diabetes management. We talked about what diabetes is, how it's diagnosed, lab values, blood sugar and insulin, and the key components of managing type two diabetes. One of the main components of managing diabetes is healthy eating. And so we'll take a deep dive into healthy eating today, especially what healthy eating looks like for people with type two diabetes. We're gonna cover carb counting and portion sizes. We'll look at the nutrition facts label, and we'll even look at a couple of examples of meals and practice some carb counting. And so again, looking at our three-legged stool, we're focusing on the healthy eating leg today. As a refresher, type two diabetes is a chronic disease that currently doesn't have a cure. However, it can be managed with healthy eating, active living, and taking medication. It's the most common form of diabetes, and it occurs either when our cells aren't able to use the insulin that our body makes, or our body just doesn't make enough insulin. And so it causes our blood sugar to get too high and we can't use the energy we get from food properly. Before we dive into this session, there are a few key terms that may be helpful. Insulin is a hormone that you'll hear me talk about again and again. This is made in our body and it allows our body to use sugar from our bloodstream as fuel. Blood glucose or blood sugar, this is what food is broken down into. So when we eat carbohydrate containing foods, it gets digested and absorbed into our bloodstream and it floats around as sugar. And that's what our body uses as fuel. Hyperglycemia is a fancy word for high blood sugar. Hypoglycemia is another fancy word for low blood sugar. A carbohydrate is an essential nutrient in food that our body uses for energy. And this will always cause our blood sugar to go up. A calorie is not really a physical thing that we could hold in our hands, but it's a measure of energy and it's the measure of energy that we get from food. Now let's look at the basics of healthy eating. This can be the basics of healthy eating for people with diabetes, but it also applies to people without diabetes. So the basics of healthy eating are shown here. This includes eating plenty of fruits and vegetables, limiting the amount of sugar and fat that we get in our diet, primarily added sugar. We wanna focus on eating whole grains, so making at least half of our grains whole grain versions that contain more fiber and nutrients. We wanna eat a variety of foods, fill our meals with color and variety of different food groups and pay attention to portion sizes. Oftentimes, with a typical Western diet, if you go out to eat, you're served a really big portion size, but our bodies may not actually need that much food. So we'll learn about portion sizes. And then lastly, drink mostly water. This is true for people with and without diabetes, but it's especially true for people with diabetes. Getting extra sugar and calories from drinks is not beneficial really to anyone. These are usually lower in any nutrients that are beneficial to our body, but they're just giving us sugar that we may not need. Now, healthy eating with type two diabetes includes all of the things on that last list. And this list shown here has three additional things to consider. So people with diabetes should aim to spread their carbohydrates out throughout the day. This keeps you from getting spikes in your blood sugar. People with diabetes also need to learn how to count carbs, and we'll look at that today. It's also helpful for people with diabetes to learn to save things that are really sugary or not healthy for them for special occasions, like sweets, sodas, baked goods, and candies. I typically don't encourage people with type 2 diabetes to have soda really ever. It's just not helpful, and it causes your blood sugar to get really high. So if you're looking to make changes to what you eat, and you drink soda, starting by limiting that or switching to a no sugar added version or a diet version might be a good place to start. Let's look at the plate method. This is a method that can help you make sure you're getting about the right amount from the different food groups without having to do a lot of measuring or math. First, you wanna fill half of your plate with non-starchy vegetables, and I'll cover what is considered a non-starchy vegetable later in the session. Next, fill one fourth of the plate 
with a lean protein. This could be chicken or fish or a uh, vegetarian type of protein. And then you wanna fill the remaining one fourth of your plate with a starch or a carbohydrate. This could be pasta, rice, potatoes. And we'll break down what goes into each of these sections later in this session. It's also nice to add um, a serving of fruit to meals. And if you drink dairy, a serving of low fat dairy can help you get the vitamin D and calcium that your body needs. Now weight loss has a role in managing diabetes for some people. If you have extra body weight, you may have an increased risk of developing long-term complications secondary to type 2 diabetes. Losing just a few pounds can help with diabetes control and reduce the risk of other health problems. And a bonus, sometimes losing a little bit of weight can help you feel more energy or just feel better in general. It can be easier on your joints um, and help you stay mobile. In fact, losing just a few pounds can help lower someone's A1C level. When you lose as little as 5% of your body weight, which is just about 10 pounds for someone who weighs 200 pounds, you can make a big difference for your A1C levels and better manage your diabetes. Now, where to start if you're looking to pursue losing a little bit of weight? First, eating healthier foods, so more fruits and vegetables. So focusing on the healthy foods that you should fill up on is a more encouraging way to view weight loss than to focus strictly on what you can't have. So find the healthy foods that you love and substitute those for the less healthy things. Getting more active is important, but it's also important to find a way of being active that you enjoy. Setting realistic goals will set you up for success because if you set an unattainable goal and you don't meet it, you may feel disappointed and you may just give up, right? So set a small goal to begin with. And when you meet that, you may feel more encouraged and more likely to keep going and then make changes that you can stick to. I say this because following a fad diet or a really restrictive diet may give you results in the short term, but when you return to your normal style of eating, you may see weight come back on. So I encourage people to follow a lifestyle of healthy eating that they can stick to in the long term. So it's important to note that with diabetes, you can still eat and enjoy some of your favorite foods with the key of following moderation. The whole family can also take part in healthy eating. So bringing in friends and family as a support system will help you meet your goals as well. You can fit your favorite foods into a healthy diabetes meal plan and still find a way to enjoy things that you love while managing type two diabetes. And that's what we hope to achieve in this session.